welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. He's cleared the table. His next chore is to churn the butter. And yes. he's going to spin the wool, nice wool into sweater. yarn. You got anything else? Welcome to Faith and Friends, where we have jumped back in time. The good old days. Where's the butter? It's in the it fridge. It takes time, right? You gotta churn <laughs> it and keep let going. It sit. You oh, you do? Yeah, you can't stop. I thought it was two pumps and you're done. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have it's gonna be dry bread forever. At least it'll be warm <laughs> once you make the sweater. There'll be some corn, I understand. There will some be butter. some corn coming up later in the show. That's not part of the auction items, but these all <laughs> are part of the wonderful auction donations and items that have been provided. We've received in recent weeks. Yeah, it's really been a blessing. Some of the items that have come in, including the, the spinning wheel, the, the butter churner, there's been some great furniture donated. And of course, there's still time this to one. donate your items as well. Yeah, even if you really want the big wheel, keep on turning. And we'll be showing you more <laughs> auction items later in the show. And a quick reminder coming up that the donations are being accepted all month long. All month long, it's a new month. August is here, can you believe it for many? <laughs> You can't believe it. That means school. <laughs> that means football, volleyball, sports report. But for one local singer, August means singing at the National Christian Festival Unity Fest. We'll have more on that in a moment. Also today on our show, need more energy? Dr. Trudy Pieper has some tips on how to achieve that naturally if you'd rather not get your energy by churning your own butter. That's an opportunity. It's great exercise. And I think the churning butter would sap the energy, wouldn't it? Oh, no, no, no. Exercise. Exercise gives you energy. Yeah, that's what they like to tell you. <laughs> well, maybe you can get your energy by eating. It's corn on the cob season, and we're going to try three different methods to take corn off the cob. See, science tells us food does give us energy. I believe it's the sucrose, the dextrose, something that ends in an OSC. So but oast, oast, our oast. first scripture of the day talks about the crops, and it comes from Mark 26 through 29. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. That's the parable of the growing seed. As Romans 10 tells us, faith comes by hearing, hearing through the word of God. Well, a local artist wants others to hear the Word of God through song, and she's begun traveling the country doing just that. 19-year-old Hannah Beck is no stranger to TV44, and this week she's a part of a stellar lineup during the annual Unity Christian Music Festival up in Muskegon, Michigan. Matt Finkel talked with Hannah about that honor during this week's OIO in the Community segment. Local artist Hannah Beck has had a busy summer touring the area and sharing her music. Her next stop at the Unity Christian Music Festival is the biggest to date. You know, it's really exciting because this is going to bring in people from all over the place. It's, it's not a small event because of the four days and all of the artists that are coming that are big. It's going to be an exciting opportunity to share to a totally new crowd. Beck's fan base continues to grow, and while she has performed at large venues before, Hannah is honored to play at such a prestigious event. The second largest I did was Life Light, and that was this past year in June, and that was big, but Unity Fest is leaving that in the dust. It's no surprise that Hannah is gaining a loyal following. Her music combines captivating melodies with meaningful lyrics and a powerful message. The goal is to find people where they're at, to remind them that they're not alone, that they're loved, and whatever they're going through, somebody else has gone through that too, and we want to be there for them. And my ultimate goal in life is to make a difference, and I feel like where I'm at right now, music is giving me that opportunity to make a difference in people's lives emotionally, and kind of help them over that hump where they're just stuck. And throughout it all, she remains humble and focused on the message. Forging that connection with her listeners is what drives Beck to continue her passion. I hope that you find encouragement. Come find me if you want prayer for something you're going just through. Just to know that maybe one or two people who listened were touched is just huge. Um, it, it doesn't matter really to me whether or not we make it big, if we make a lot of money, but really just the fact of if we can reach people, because ultimately that's the goal. You don't 
After performing at the Unity Christian Music Festival this week, it's back into the studio. A recent trip to Nashville has connected Hannah with some of the best in the business, which only fuels that songwriting fire. We got to get in some a writing circle of some pretty fantastic writers and just walking away with a new concept of how they write. And so it was really cool to get in there, almost get your hands dirty talking to these people, finding out what it is that makes them tick. And hopefully one of them will be working with here in the near future. Well, possibly you saw Hannah sing last week during music in the park in Westminster. Arnold Coy, the Beelers, Johnny Diaz, and Jim Barron, the others who helped make an afternoon of praising the Lord a success, despite some questionable weather. It was the first time in the history of music in the park that they had some rain, and rain it did. TV 44's tent became a rain shelter for many throughout the day, which we were glad we were able to do that. But in the end, the music was wonderful, and the good news, even if you missed the event, you don't have to miss the music. It was a great night indeed, a great day. We're re-airing music in the park so you can relive it right here on TV 44 Saturday, August the 9th at noon and Friday, August 15th at 9 p.m. I want to thank Stites Grocery for sponsoring the televised portion of this event. And remember, it's just one of many incredible concerts taking place all this summer in the area. We'll remind you of a few more that you don't want to miss later in the show. Well, something else you definitely want to put on your calendar is the TV44 auction, which is getting closer and closer every day. Hmm. This past week, a generous estate donation came from Kay Wilson. Her parents both loved watching TV44, and she and her husband chose to donate the items from her parents' home to the auction. Furniture, antiques, glassware, living room, kitchen items, some very unique historical items like, like the spinning wheels, the butter churn, just uh, some really items that I consider assets for the auction. Yeah, it is really uh, nice to see a family opening up uh, their estate uh, to us and, and now on to you, our viewers, that will be available on the auction. Uh, we've got uh, just recently a shipment of Holland Grills came in, uh, several different Holland Grills, different sizes, mm -hmm. different uh, ways you can use those, and you'll be able to actually get a, a taste test, if you will, at the auction as they'll have the Holland mm. Grill working grilling up burgers. That's right. In the food area, which if you've been to the auction before, you know that's an important part of the auction. You need to eat. And yeah, Holland Grill employees are going to grill the hamburgers. Oh, wow. The hamburgers will be there for it you to good. eat. And then you can get your own Holland Grill if you're the highest bidder a little bit later in the day on the auction. All kinds of ways of transportation as well. Bikes will be there and all kinds of cars to bid on. So a very important day for the TV44 ministry. And more importantly, we can Reach out to you. It's always fun to talk with you face to face and hear how things are going in your life as you are a vital part of TV44. You know, the auction is certainly one of the things that energizes us here at TV44. And Dancy Moeller is with Dr. Trudy Peeper. The topic today is energy. Do you feel you're lacking energy? Well, Dr. Trudy has some advice that just might help you regain that jump in your step. Well, Dr. Trudy Pieper is back with us, and Dr. Pieper is a naturopathic doctor, a Christian physician who is um, practicing in Johnstown, Ohio, which is close to Columbus. And um, we want to welcome you back to the show, and we're going to talk about energy or the lack thereof. Um, there are many of us that reach maybe even a certain age and, and feel like we just don't have the get up and go that we used to have. But there are some solutions that are relatively easy, correct? Absolutely. You do not need a five-hour energy drink to give you energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see that way too much in my practice. I had a gentleman come in a couple of weeks ago, so I just can't sleep at night. I just can't sleep. I ever put my head down and we went over his diet, what he's eating, what he's doing. And I said, do you do caffeine? No, no, I don't do coffee, do any of that. Eventually it came out that he drinks three of those five-hour energy drinks a day. Oh, and that can be very dangerous. Oh my goodness, it's just terrible to your health. And I'm going, oh my goodness, what were you thinking? Right, <laughs> right. This is not the way to do that. There's, like you said, there's some very easy things that we can do. First of all, the first tip is put more greens into your diet. Green means giddy up. So leafy green vegetables, anything that's green and has leaves will give you more energy. Start your day with a smoothie. Put a handful of spinach or kale in your blender with some almond milk and some flavorings and maybe half a banana. And right there you have a start on your greens. So green means energy. Uh, eliminate the energy zappers. We talked about the five energy drink. 
We also know, uh, we've talked in the past on some of our uh, conversations about hydration. Okay. If you're tired in the afternoon, you're probably just thirsty. Drink some water. Okay. Sugar, the uh, ebbs and tides of sugar in our diet and the big gulps with uh, 32 ounces of sugar will give you an immediate rush, but the downside of that is that you will have a downfall after that. So in order to, to have more energy, you need to be more stabilized in your blood sugar. One way to do that is protein. I find that if you're craving sugar, you don't have enough protein in your diet. I think that's true because when I have tried different uh, food plans that have more protein in them, my desire for the sugary, the cookie or the ice cream tends to go away. It's very interesting how that works. It always is. It will help you maintain your blood sugar levels. And so keeping okay. a handful of nuts, um, do some kind of a protein throughout the day will keep that sugar at a more even level. Okay. And of course, stay away from coffee. Caffeine's a little bit as good, but it, it again gives you that immediate boost. But afterwards, you have the fall in your blood sugar that makes you feel more tired and burns out your adrenals for long-term effects that will definitely affect your energy level. And a lot of times there are people who put um, a lot of sugar and creamers into their coffee, which just it's aggravates the more, situation. It so. causes more inflammation and more problems that you have to deal with in yes. your body. Yes. And probably the tip that um, I think is most important for people to think about is you need to invest in yourself. So many times we just go all the time, and I like to think of energy like a checkbook. Um, you're, if you're always taking out of your checkbook and you're never putting anything in, you have nothing left mm -hmm. and you're going to be bankrupt. So you, if you need to spend time uh, to give yourself some rest, relaxation, some positive th time, things that you enjoy doing on a regular basis will invest in your, your energy checkbook and give you more energy. We also know that stress is such a huge part of illness and mm -hmm. burning energy. And by focusing on some prayer and some daily devotions to help your body stay calm and your mind calm and tranquil, that will also in improve your energy level. And another big thing with energy that people forget about is laughter. Um, yeah. Laughter is so important in our lives, and it, um, it builds our immune system, uh, raises our metabolism, helps us so we lose weight, uh, and also helps us to be calm. So laughter, resting, getting outside, doing a little exercise, seeing some sh sunshine will help you invest in yourself. And I am so thankful that we are moving into a season where so much of that will be available to us, oh, you know, yes. because it has been hard after the winter we've experienced to, um, you know, find many of those points that you offer as solutions. So um, we appreciate that. And um, we'll be back to talk with you um, in a little bit then, okay? Great, thank All you. All right, back to you. Thought we had cleared the table. You have to eat three times a day. Mm. But this show's only half an hour. <laughs> you know, I've also heard, I imagine Dr. Trudy would have some thoughts on eating small meals. That's Maybe very we're important. Yeah. Portion small controls, meals one of those throughout fads we hear the day. about. Yeah. That's right. This but is a actually, small meal for you. We are not here to eat the corn. Good. We are here <laughs> to challenge ourselves to cut the corn. Okay. We received this auction donation Lee's Corn Cutter and Creamer. Please be careful with the knives. Hey, my husband said to tell you that he purposely did not send the largest knife because he didn't trust you with it. <laughs> what? I've never heard anybody with a knife. Not yet. <laughs> so we have three different styles of corn cutting, and we are going to attempt. Is one the microwave way? Have you heard about this? One? I guess not, because you have you heard about this? You, you in the husk? I'm I'm hijacking your show. In the husk, you put it in the microwave, and then it just slices right off after, I don't know, five minutes or something. No, we didn't try that up. one. Google it. So we're going to try three different corn cutting ideas okay. that we've heard about. We want to hear from you if you've got some other ideas. Andy is going to use Lee's Corn Cutter and Creamer. Mark is going to go with the traditional route. And I am going to try for the bunt pan route. Have you ever heard of the bunt pan? No. Supposedly, this is less messy. All right. You just slam it down? I don't know. We will see. What do I do? So you, you can see the traditional way, as I cut it off, the kernels are going all over the place, which is why the bunt pan can be a useful way to do it, because you collect not only the kernels, but the juices right in the bunt pan. How are you doing over there, Andy? I feel like I'm going to cut myself. I'd be much better with a knife. Are you getting anywhere? Well, I got a little under there. Maybe you need to take the guard off. We well, don't have you didn't upside, tell me do this. <laughs> this is all experimentation. I'm if trying you to notice, cream corn here. We're missing our food expert, Zach. Is there a worse invention in the world than cream corn? <laughs> cream oh. succotash. 
That is awful as well. <laughs> hey, I heard, this stuff? I actually found out a secret. Some of this corn has been donated by Burgess Farms, mm -hmm. and they were telling me that they thought it was sweeter than other corn, and I found out their secret. I don't know if I'm supposed to reveal it on Sugar? TV or not. Molasses. Oh. So molasses, molasses is in the... Did, does that make the corn slower too? I don't know. I'm done. How are you guys doing? Well, I've got the kernels off the cob for the most part. Andy? There are three kernels. What am I in supposed to do? Nobody has told me yet. I'm just trying to. Did you just do that? I don't know. Thanks for your help, food expert. <laughs> Where is Zach when we need him? There is a little cream on there if you want to this, swirl it off. This Lee's corn cutter that you have yes. is from 1969. Okay. It we haven't had any advances in corn creaming technology <laughs> in the last 50 years. Best known method for removing corn from the cob uniformly. That's what it says here on the back of this of this information. <laughs> I'm obviously doing it very wrong. <laughs> Remove the cover by lifting hey, the rear of the plane. <laughs> oh. Loosen the blade screw to lower the blade. How are you doing over there, Mark? I'm not even it's, listening. As I said, the kernels are all off the cob, yeah, but they're all over the place, which is... Lay cutter over a pan. You know how gross that is. Liquid corn. I don't think gross is a proper word to be using on television. What's Place fresh... That? Oh, here's our problem. Place fresh, un uncooked ear of corn in oh. the groove and push with yeah, full so stroke and quick motion holding fingers. Well, here's you the deal. Hold your fingers? You can come to the auction. We'll give you a great <laughs> deal on the Lee's corn cutter and creamer. Then <laughs> you can used. show us how to use it because I think we need a little bit of help. I'll give a demonstration to the people. There's cream. He's up to, he's up to nine kernels in there. It's a spoonful. Oh, you know, baby steps. <laughs> Because <laughs> babies are who's going to eat the cream corn anyway. Oh, it's so gross. I can oh my smell goodness. it. <laughs> well, yes, we love that is for a, you. an aroma. We would love to get not only your ideas on the best way to cut corn, but why don't you give us your best cream corn recipes and maybe <laughs> we'll have a cream corn Never. taste <laughs> in the coming Where's the day. garlic? My yearly eating of the garlic. We missed that, I think. We do need some garlic. We could, we could watch him eat garlic because I'm not going to join in. With so much better garlic. than corn. You just sprinkle garlic on stuff, it's fine. But eating a clove of he garlic, just bites that's, it. well. Yeah. Well, I think we have proven. Clearly, it started his growth. I think we have proven that without our food guy, Zach, we're in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Lost. But he is with Bill Harris as they continue their discussion about the five basic emotional issues of mankind. I think cream corn might be one of them or cause at least three of them. <laughs> but seriously, this week, the topic is loneliness. Well, Bill, we've been in the middle of uh, discussing a new teaching series for you, a five-part teaching series on mankind's five basic emotional struggles. And we're talking about loneliness this week, something that is certainly relatable to all of us at some point. And uh, you really dive into Adam and Eve, the beginning of the Word of God, to discuss this topic. Yes, because right away the loneliness came about because of sin. Sin tends to bring about loneliness and alienation from God and from your fellow man as well. And so when they ran and hid from God in the garden, right away they were alienating themselves from him because they didn't even know what it was like to be alienated from him. They, they welcomed him mm -hmm. every day. And man is born even today because of that with a God vacuum. Uh. And, and I, I like to put it this way, that man, God is the only one who can scratch where you really itch. Mm -hmm. Because man is, is just scratching around trying to find satisfaction of life. You can't do it apart from him. There are wonderful things in the world that you can avail yourselves of, mm -hmm. uh, yourself of, but still, you need God to fill that God vacuum. That's right. And so you mentioned, Adam, at the point where they were separated and possibly one of the, the most dreadful questions I think that we could ever imagine where God asked, where are you? Yes. To Adam and, yes. and even, and just you, you dive into that a little he's, bit. He's still asking mankind that question today, today Zach. Where are you? In, in your state of alienation and separation from God because of your sin, all the guilt and the shame that come about as a result of sin, where are you? And, and what it is, it's a question that's not seeking the information about where you are physically. Mm -hmm. Where are you mentally? Where are you spiritually? I want you close to me. And what, what Adam responded with is very telling. He said, I was afraid hmm. because I was naked, so I hid myself. Look at that. I, I was afraid. He had never known what fear was, yeah. but he alienated himself from God and fear came about and he says, I was, I was naked. He didn't even know he was naked. So yeah. all of these other emotions came about because of sin. 
And it's so detrimental. You can see why God, as a loving God of the universe, still loved us so much that he wants to draw mankind back to himself. And that's hmm. why his son, he sent his son to die for us so that we wouldn't have the loneliness. Yeah. yeah. You talk about how Adam and Eve, they experienced oneness with God before there was the loneliness. Yes. And us being born with a God vacuum, there may be some people who don't know um, really the satisfaction or the fulfillment that comes with yeah. the relationship of God. There's a lot of people who maybe have tried to fill that lonely, loneliness with other things of the world, like you mentioned. Yeah. But there's only one true fulfillment. Amen. You, you know, it, it, it's not a matter of going to seek it through another man, a woman on the side, mm -hmm. or, or, or going into the gambling den or the gambling casino, yeah. those kinds of things. You may find a measure of comfort and thrill, but in the final analysis, there's still that thing inside that's not being reached. It's because you were made for God. You yeah. were made to be with him and serve him. And that's why the antidote to loneliness is really fellowship. Yeah. You know, somebody described it as two fellows in the same ship. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it really is. So it's fellowship on a vertical level between you and your God, which also translates to fellowship on a horizontal level, level between you and your brother and your sister. Yeah. So it works both ways. And so it starts, does it start with the vertical fellowship? It and does. Then evolve into the horizontal, the horizontal fellowship. Exactly. And, and you need both. You, no man is an island, you know. Yeah. So you've got to have your, 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 the fellowship with your brother and your sister as well. But most importantly, it is God that we have that closeness with and that, 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 you know, that, that closeness and intimacy with. And it seems to me that loneliness is something that can almost breed or feed itself um, for those who struggle. Maybe they do have known God as, as their personal savior, but still struggle with a, a loneliness mm -hmm. and make the efforts to fellowship but maybe they failed for some reason and, and it almost feeds back. Why put out the effort if I'm not going to be able to fellowship or, or cure the loneliness? And how do how would those people be helped? Well, scripture tells us even in the Old Testament, he who would have friends must first show himself friendly. Hmm. So you have to reach out. And it, it's a point of, of doing that because if not, you can be in a crowd filled with people, Zach, and still be lonely. Yeah. You can be around a lot of people who love and admire you and still because you're not allowing God to touch that one place inside of you where you really have a void because you don't do it, there's still a loneliness that's not being satisfied. Only God can do it because you ultimately, you ultimately were designed to have fellowship with Him. Thank you, Zach. Pull out your calendars, your phones, <laughs> your iPad, or whatever device or method of... Go to the kitchen refrigerator, put it on the calendar on the fridge. <laughs> it still works the best. Want to mark down your events on August the 16th. We've already told you about it a few times. Going to be bigger than ever. Wayne Stock 2014. It's coming up Saturday the 16th. And Getty, Salem, China, Lori Triplett, Love and the Outcome, Josh Wilson, Rhett Walker Band, and Building 429. All for free, all at Skip Walkman Stadium starting at 3 o'clock. Also, donations will be accepted for the Daughter Project, which is based in northwestern Ohio, working diligently to rescue and help girls and women who've been trapped in wow. sex trafficking. Of course, that's down in St. Mary's. Another event looking forward to on the 16th, God's Shepherd Closer, presented by Royalty Tribe Ministries and Straight from the Heart Productions. This event is at Shawnee United Methodist Church, starts at 6 p.m. Local groups, including B-List Boys, MC Righteous, Amber Rose, and many more, as August 16th is definitely the date for music of all kinds in this region, and all of them glorifying God. Pick your pick. It's gonna be right. a good day. I think I'll be down yes. in St. Mary's. I'm excited for Wayne Stock, first time I've been able to check it out. We will have a booth down there at, at Wayne Stock, so make sure you come by. We'll have some giveaways, some information. You can just come and say hello to us. Which Tell us how to cut the corn. <laughs> Bring us some corn. We'll do no a we'll do a corn. demonstration on it. Corn I bread. bet you somehow we could get we him to done eat cream corn. Like the cornbread where it's kind of moist. How would we have gotten the oven onto the set? Could have used the Holland Grill. I think you can do bread on the grill. I bet you can. I know we've had pie on the grill yes, before. We that was outstanding, the apple pie. Bread on the grill, pie on the grill. We're still looking for a six foot seven tall cake. We have not heard from anybody who's going to provide us a six foot seven tall shocking. cake for the auction. So that is still <laughs> up for grabs. You can be the one to do that. Well, on this musical note, we're going to bring this week's Faith and Friends to a close. And we want to close you again with our scripture of the day, which Kim talks about seeds planting and harvest. Andy? Kingdom of God is if a man would scatter seed on the ground and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, then the full grain in the head. 
But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. The harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. Let's send out those workers to really reap the, reap the harvest. Certainly looking to send out the workers coming up on the auction in the first Saturday of September. Still time to donate items. Mark it on your calendar. We hope to see you out there. And that's going to do it for us this week on Faith and Friends. Hope to see you next time.